Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And of course, we open up a lot of posts. This is another mail day. We've got one, two, three, four sweet, nice envelopes we're going to open today. Why don't I just start with the one that's on the top here? Let's get these out of the way. Um, this seems to be a letter out of the Netherlands and here we actually use these digits you can use them for stamps as well like you can use a number code yeah yeah i know i know it's pretty fancy curious to see what's in here and oh there we go i see a spirit link a fourth edition spirit link And is it just a spirit link or some other cards as well? We'll just have to see. And, you know, spirit link is an okay card. I think my biggest issue with spirit link is that it doesn't work as a life link. The way spirit link works is you first get the damage and then you get the life. Meaning if you're on, for example, five life and your opponent attacks with the juggernaut, um, and you've got a spirit link on a juggernaut, it means you first get five damage, so you die first, and then you get the life, but you're not gonna get the life anymore because you're already dead. So, I mean, it's not always ideal, and it's, under it's understandable that a lot of people prefer a Swords to Plowsiers over a spirit link, but of course, spirit link has its own little synergies and combos. Um, for example, you can put your spirit link on an if biff a freet and it gets uh, you know mighty powerful. You can put it on a Tim, you know, that's kind of fun. And in some cases, I've used it in combination with decks that use the Fajured Enchantress because this is an enchantment, so it will draw you a card. So in some circumstances, Spirit Link is the better option than the Swords to Plowsiers. Oh, there's another card behind this, so let's um Let's have a look, shall we? Let's see if we can recognize it. Jesper Mirfors, it's a 4-4. Four, four. Oh, I think this is the Wormwood Tree Folk. Yes. So I need, this is one of the last cards that I need for my The Dark Collection. It's almost complete. Um, I didn't really want to get the Wormwood Tree Folk, not because it's not a cool card, but it's just been ticking up in, in price. Um, as you know, this is not a financial channel, but of course I am, <laughs> you know, looking at my wallet when I make a purchase. And this is one of these cards that um, if you only have a one-off, you're not really going to play that much with it. Although it's it's really a beautiful card. You could actually use it maybe in, in like a Singleton or Highlander format, I guess. Let's let's first take a look at what the card does. So it's two green and three for Wormwood Tree Folk from the Dark. Summon Tree Folk. Let me just get it out of the... Uh, sleeve here because of all the glare um and then it's a four four so it's a four 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 five which actually is in the dark expansion it's pretty good value for your mana right a bang for your buck if you look at the uh, the dark expansion so five mana casting cost for a four four is actually pretty good and it has two upsides as well you can pay two green and wormwood tree foe gains forest walk until end of turn and also does two damage to you you can also pay two black and Wormwood Tree Folk gains Swamp Walk until end of turn, and it does two damage to you as well. So it's kind of an evil Tree Folk, right? That art is really stunning. Those red eyes there. Pretty horror like. Very cool, very well made. Nice art by Jesper Meerforce, who was also the art director of the dark expansion of the set. And I think art-wise, the dark is just absolutely a stunning, beautiful set. So Wormwood Tree Folk and a Spirit Link here. That's Those are the first two cards for our mail day. Let's open up the next one. And this one comes from Wouter, also from the Netherlands. And okay, nicely packed here. What do we see, cows? A farm, it seems. Let me get the scissors. Or is it sheep? Sheep or cows? I'm not sure. Okay, there we go. Kind of tearing it up here. Doesn't matter. It's all good. There is the cart we're looking for. Well, not the promo card. 
Yeah, Arena. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never, yeah, never a big fan of those, you know, digital, digital games. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, Anson Maddox. It's an O1. Is it? Uh, could it be the Banshee? Is Banshee an O1 creature? I don't know. I think I already have a Banshee. Though. Oh, it's Frankenstein's monster. Yeah, of course. So this is another one, just like the Wormwood Tree Folk. I was kind of hesitant to to get it because of the recent price spikes. Um, but you know what it's like when you're collecting a set and you're so close to its completion. You're like, okay, I just have to have to get it. Um, so Frankenstein's monster is two black and X for a summon monster, an O1 monster. When Frankenstein's monster is brought into play, if you do not take X creatures from your graveyard and remove them from the game, Frankenstein's monster is countered. Okay, so that's quite nice. It's not even an option. You have to remove creatures from your graveyard. For each creature removed from your graveyard this way, you may choose to give Frankenstein's monster a permanent plus two plus O, oh, plus one plus one, or plus O oh, plus two. So yeah, it is it is a very cool card because it does something else, you know, than than what you're used to. And I think the Dark was one of the first sets to have a lot of graveyard interaction. Um, which of course the graveyard has always been part of of Magic the Gathering, especially when a card like Millstone came to the picture, but also in the in the alpha sets with Animate Dead, Resurrection, um, Raise Dead, of course, the classic. Uh, but in general, when something was in the graveyard, it was pretty safe. And with the dark, you know, more and more interactions with graveyards came like Frankenstein's monster. And um, yeah, really happy to own this. So another step closer to completing my The Dark set. Really nice art. Very, very cool. I wonder what's, what is what is this here in the back? I wonder what this is. Kind of hard to spot. Is it like, no idea. Never noticed it until now. Anyway, really sweet art. Let me know if you know what this is here in the back. I'm curious. There's probably somebody that has seen this before and knows what this is. Uh, okay, Anson Maddox, always, always very creepy art. Very nice. Um, let's go to the next one. And this is the letter from Germany. It's from Mitya. I think I know what's in here. Let's open it up. I think this is uh, some sort of patch. And there we go. And actually, Mitya, I have to send uh, my pin to you as well. Okay. And yeah, there we go. How cool is that? Savannah Lines. So a really nice patch. Thank you, Micha, for sending this over. Um, and then let's go through the last letter here. Uh, just did it random. So this is from Card Advantage Europe. Let's open it up and see what it is. And there we go. Maybe some more of the dark. I'm, I'm very close to completing it. See some token art, some proling. Oh yes, some more the dark curse artifact. Very cool. Two black and two to cast for an enchant artifact from the dark. During his or her upkeep, controller of target artifact may choose to bar bury target artifact. If controller chooses not to bury the artifact, curse artifact does two damage to him or to her. So you know that's something. Of course, the thing with these is. Really nice, really like the colors, by the way. They really pop. Mark Tedden. They really pop. The problem, of course, is the casting cost of this thing. Two black and two. That is pretty steep. But what it does is actually pretty nice. Like if you would play this in an Underworld Dreams kind of control deck, creatureless, um, you know, I yeah, maybe it can have a place in there. It's quite quite interesting. Another, oh, this is Anson Maddox, but it looks like another the dark card. They look exactly the same. Maybe also an enchantment. Oh, Worms of the Earth. Yes. Three black and two to cast. Enchantment. No new land may be brought into play. This is quite of an interesting card. So during any player's upkeep, any player may destroy Worms of the Earth by sacrificing two lands or taking five damage from Worms of the Earth. So it's again one of those standstill cards, right? And if you're also already taking a lot of damage, I can see these two 
working together as well because when your opponent cannot play any new lands, you know, he probably wants to get mana through, you know, your your well-known artifacts like the Soul Ring, the Mox and, and whatnot, the Felwer Stone, perhaps since we're talking about the Dark. But with Curse Artifact, that also comes with the cost. So it's like it's double trouble, right, for your opponent. And then add cards like Underworld Dreams that deal even more damage. And before you know it, you run out of life. So, yeah, that could be a really nice match. So Worms of the Earth. Very cool art, right? Like you see this this person, you know, banging on the ground, maybe to get worms out. And then you see these huge worms here going up. Uh-oh. It doesn't look good for the man. Yeah, he's he's got to get ready for some pain. Worms of the earth. Wow. And bone flute. Okay, this is actually pretty useful. I only had an Italian bone flute. Um, so this is my first English one. Three to cast. Artifact. Two and tap. All creatures get minus one, minus O oh, until end of turn with art from Christopher Rush. Beautiful use of colors. He definitely loved those, those bright orange colors in the background. He used that for multiple cards. And it's I understand why. It's, it's really beautiful. Um, so Bone Flute can be pretty useful when your opponent is using kind of a swarm strategy with a lot of little creatures trying to get in there for, for damage. And then you can use your Bone Flute um, to kind of protect you. And that works way better than, for example, a, a Maze of If. So we've got Bone Flute. Oh, double Bone Flute. And a token. So double bone flute, really nice. I think I needed one for the collection. Maybe a second one if I want to to play with the bone flute. Maybe in a sideboard could be quite interesting. Okay, so this uh, this was the mail day. A lot of cards from the dark expansion. Really happy with that. And as soon as I've completed the set, I'll probably make a nice video about it. Also, really happy with this. Bad as a lines patch from Micha Held. Thank you, Micha, for sending this over. I'll be sending uh, a pin, Timmy Talks pin, back to you there. I believe you're uh, you're in Germany, so I'll send it back to to you. Thank you very much for the patch. Lovely cards, and I would love to would like to thank you <laughs> for watching another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you want to support the channel, you're actually already doing it by simply watching this video. Another way of doing that is by um, leaving a like, leave a comment. Uh, also subscribe, of course, if you're not a subscriber yet, uh, please do so. It really helps the channel moving uh, forward. And uh, what you can also do is you can also become a sponsor of the channel. And you can do that via Patreon by becoming a patron of the channel. There's probably a link popping up right here, like a little info card. You can click on there and that will tell you how you can join, what you can do, and I believe you can already sponsor the channel starting with $1 a month. So it would be great if you would consider doing that. Talking about that, let's go to the end scroll and let's take a look at the amazing, the beautiful, the wonderful channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. Let's go. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomba kazee!